Uh, hi, Troy back here. So, what we're talking about, some of the best physical defensive walls in the game. The first Pokemon that will always pop in my mind, someone that I find really close to my heart is Skarmory. This thing, even since back in, like, Gen 4, 5, it, it got overshadowed by other Pokemon. Uh, to name a few, Gliscor, Bronzong, and Gen 4, they became, people would say, better defensive walls because it brought more to the table, even though I really think that would be true, personally. Ferrothorn also came on the scene as that steel type, but I just think because of its typing, it's just not not really there yet, you know, even Gen 5. And even, say, when the next gen comes out, who knows what will happen. But back in Gen 2, when this guy came out, Pokemon were really, a lot of physical Pokemon were rampant on the scene. Machamp was being used, Hitmonchan, Snorlax, uh, Gyarados, anybody like that, they were, they were there, they were, they were the ones just, you know, they're, all the physical attackers were out there, Zapdos and Starmory were the main special sweepers, but everyone was all physical back then, so, what did you need back then? You always need a Skarmory, you, you had to bring one, or it was going to be a tough battle, what did he do for you, what couldn't he do for you, like, we could look at his movesets, like, he still had Whirlwind back then. He had Rest. He had Curse. He could run Curse. What? That is insane. I can't believe Curse. Wow. What What? What? did you want it to do for you? Did you want it to Whirlwind Toxic Spikes? Come on. Rest, Sleep Talk? I doubt it, but hey, you know, it would work. I think it could Defog. This thing had Brave Bird once uh, you could get into uh, Diamond Pearl. You could have Roost. This, that, that's what also makes it better than Ferrothorn, because Ferrothorn doesn't have synthesis. It has Leech Seed and Leftovers. You can run whatever. But the best item to give Skarmory was Leftovers. Um, you could run, I guess, a Citrus Bear, but that wasn't really uh, useful. But what we're talking about, what did you need for your team? If you need that wall, you had to go for Skarmory. No doubt. It was the undisputed Gen 3. Uh, physical wall. This that thing was the king of physical walls. It, it, no one brought anything else. They brought Skarmory. Even Gen Four, they would still bring Skarmory, just because the fact that it, it the typing could work out for you. So was the defenses and its move set was you know unlike anybody else back then. No one else could still have a healing move, Roost, Whirlwind, which can get them out of the battle, an entry hazard, and an attack on the same go. Like no one had that. If we're going to talk about Gligar in Gen 4, okay, he had, you know, his Toxic Heal, he had uh, his Substitute, and then Protect, and then he could Earthquake, okay. But Skarmory, once you just feel like you got that thing low enough, next thing you know, it's just going to roost all its health back. It's Toxicing you, so you're you're slowly dying. Or that Brave Bird stab, it still does damage. This thing still has 80 base attack. It's crazy. So if you look in the metagame, the OU metagame, back in Gen 4, it was put in the teams about 11% of the time, which is cracking the top 10. That is um, pretty impressive when there's other Pokemon being used, not just physical walls, because it's one of the top physical walls. Even I would say top 5 physical wall in Gen 4. Um, but overall, top 10 usage in OU. So this thing's being used a lot. It only got overshadowed by the other Pokemon arrows used, like Caesar, Tyrantar, but for his role... Skarmory was the it Pokemon. Most people would run Bronze on yes, but that's for special cases on, say, a Trick Room team. And I don't want to go into that just yet. But if you really wanted someone on your team to always be that safe, open, and lead, if you know they're going to go somewhat physical, open with Skarmory. You set up Spikes or Stealth Rock that turn. You know, you can set up two Spikes. You're going to live three attacks if you see anything, you know, physical, no matter what. Maybe... I would say um, the Heracross, or not a Heracross, the uh, Electivire or Infernape, they could stop you, yes, with those Thunder Punches. But even then, you're going to take a few hits to go down. And that's what I'm, the, the whole point of this. I'm just trying to get across it. Scarberry forever is just going to be in the OU tier. It's going to be here to stay. This thing's not going anywhere. I, I really have no doubt in my mind. Uh, even uh, in Gen 7, no matter what they do to his base stats, which I would find hard to believe. Since uh, Gold and Silver, when he got created and, you know, just molded 
by the Pokemon gods of his, you know, just just upbringing. Like, they haven't changed his base stats ever. Even now to X and Y, nothing's changed. So I still feel maybe in the next gen nothing will change. And if, if anything, they make him better or they boost any of his moves. Like, if they make Brave Bird more damage or they change up Stealth Rock, who knows what they're going to do. They always change moves every gen, and who knows what they're going to do. I would have to say, even in X and Y with the... The new Mega of Megas, like, if you wanted to stop a lot of the physical Megas, like Mega Pinsir, you had to bring Skarmory. You have no choice. You don't need Ferrothorn. You need Skarmory. That's what you got to do. You need Skar Skarmory. He could also set up a Defog. If you need a Defog on your team, he, he has Defog now. Like, that's just all it is. It can even run Taunt. I, even if you want to put a Speed Investment into that, you can run Taunt. But... Now, um, switching over from that, I want to go over some tournament matches. As I said before, he was playing 11% of the games. In a lot of the singles uh, Smogon tournaments, you could see the curse set that he used back in Gen 2 was still relevant in the really, really early Gen 3 matches. And this thing was walling off Machamps. It was walling off uh, anything physical like Snorlax. Even Gyarados, something, things like that. Uh, it was just taking him out. And all I could see from the matches I saw, the Stealth Rock or the Spikes, and sometimes these guys would get three Spikes on the field. They would get three Spikes on the field, and then it's like, what do you do at that point? They don't, if they have a Flying type, yeah. But they got three Spikes. That's about 25% of your health right there. Then they Toxic next turn. That is, that is like, what are you going to do in that situation? Skarmory's best friend, Blissey, he was, Skarm Bliss, back in Gen 4, was a threat and a terror. Everybody was running it. Everybody was running it. it was, there was nothing you could do to stop Skarm Bliss in singles. It's like, you see a, a physical um, Pokemon, you bring out Skarm. You, they switch it to a special, you bring out Blissey. Both of them are going to have Toxic, and if Skarm resets up those rocks, and you don't got a spinner, you are going to lose that game. Hands down. So, I don't think I have anything else to say. I, I really cannot talk about this Pokemon enough. And I really would like to, and all I want to do is to just shed light on the Pokemon that would seem to have been overshadowed by other new Pokemon that have been made in the previous gens. But to show you what he's been able to do since he started and continue to do. And that's why I feel like he's going to be that Pokemon from Gen 7. 8th and onward.